Oh boy, it's been a wonderful weekend. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of hard to believe that I've been gone 12 years because that feels like I've just been able to step right back in today and see so many wonderful old friends. Thank you for welcoming me. It's been a real privilege to be back, but I do realize that given all the time that I've been away, there are a lot of you who probably don't know me at all. And if you know anything about me, it might just be that I'm the priest that was responsible for all the posters that still hang on the wall, which is pretty cool. Come for a meal, stay to be fed. That was the first one. It is fitting that I am here today for the Eckhart Mission series because what you might not know about those posters is that Louise Eckhart was really behind them. Louise, a longtime faithful member of St. David's, died during my tenure here. And unfortunately, I didn't really know her. She spent her final long years in nursing care. So the only way that I got to know Louise was honestly through her will. When her bequest came, we actually thought that there was probably not left much money left because a lot of it would have gone to her care in her final years. But still, reading her estate plans was like getting a glimpse into a beautiful faith. She had designated gifts for all kinds of good work, intending the remains of her life to be used for God's kingdom really to be used for all of you, for your spiritual care and growth. So thanks be to God for Louise. I don't remember all the details of her estate plans, but I do remember one. There was a portion designated for evangelism. You see, I was the associate for newcomer ministries and evangelism while I was here. And true story, when the Reverend David Boyd gave me that title, I told him, okay, I know what Newcomer Ministries is, and I think I know what to do with that, but tell me what you mean by evangelism. What exactly would you like me to do? And he said, well, I don't know, but you'll figure it out. (laughs) That was David. So... I was still figuring it out when Louise's estate plans came to us, and some months later, it turned out that there were still some funds behind those plans, and all of a sudden, I had a chunk of money at my disposal to spend on evangelism, never having had a budget to my needs, inspiration started to flow, and very soon I was thinking about all the wonderful things that make this parish so unique and beautiful that everybody needed to know about. Things like Chef Ray's delicious meals, the gorgeous singing of the Compline Choir in those days, a coffee shop and a labyrinth right here in the middle of this downtown scene. These are all such terrific gifts to the community of people around here. But honestly, they're just the access points. They are simply the invitations. They are ultimately not what we are called to do in this place. Because we are called here to the transforming love of God and Jesus Christ. And that's what we have that is worth staying for. And that's what, with the extraordinary talent of Rick Patrick became a series of 10 direct mail campaigns that went out to all the downtown residents and beyond, and eventually they were made into posters too. Come for a walk, stay for the journey. Come for the Wi-Fi, stay for a higher connection. It was, it was a fun project. And that little project salted the earth around here at St. David's. It's shown the light of God's love upon all of your neighbors, just like you, St. David's, have always done, and just like you continue to do. I watch, I see from Facebook, I know you're continuing. Where we pick up in the Sermon on the Mount from the Gospel of Matthew today, 
Jesus says, that as, as it is recorded in the original Koine Greek, humais este tohalas. In proper modern English, that translates to, you are the salt of the earth. But as it would be better translated in Texas or in Arkansas, y'all are the salt of the earth. It's the second person plural pronoun in Greek, not singular, but plural. Y'all are the salt of the earth. And he goes on to say, as Jesus is speaking to this crowd full of men and women and children, some of them sick, some of them hurting, some of them fervently religious, some of them mildly curious. Y'all are the salt of the earth. You, singular, are connected by Jesus to one another. According to Jesus, each one of you, singular, is part of a much bigger you, plural. And y'all, not a single one of you has been left out. God has connected you to one another for God's good purposes, which, let's admit it, is sometimes a mixed bag. I mean, how many of you have thought, I really love Jesus, but I'm not sure about all these people. <laughs> and we won't point any fingers here, but our own crowd of Christ followers is full, not only of sick and hurting and grieving people, but also with sinners and self-righteous do-gooders and some who are just occasionally obnoxious. Our crowd includes staunch conservatives and crazy liberals, prejudiced and fearful some of whom for her, some for whom barbecue means pulled pig and others for whom that could only mean brisket by god's design we are connected to one another so that we can learn from each other and even more importantly so that we can learn to love each other that's why god connects us and this is why jesus says y'all are the salt of the earth. Collectively, our purpose is to bring out the best in the world around us. When used correctly in cooking, salt should not overpower food, but should season it, allowing the flavors of each component to create something that is really worth savoring. Salt isn't very good by itself. But mixed in and connected with a rich variety of ingredients, food really comes to life. We are connected to each other by God's design so that in connection to the world, we may bring the world to life. And this is why Jesus says, y'all are the light of the world. Just like salt, light finds its value in how it is used to benefit others. Light gives color where there was only darkness. It allows people to see what they did not know was there. It enables us to move with confidence because we know what's ahead of us and can see where we want to go. What would life be like without light. Y'all are the light of the world, Jesus said. And God will use our connection with each other to bring a greater connection to the world God created. But without God, without God, however, our connections are but weak and tenuous links not strong enough to really support people through life and possibly even treacherous for those who will be deceived into trusting them. 
And I think that this is why Jesus was so critical of the scribes and Pharisees of his day. They knew the law, but they were missing the heart of it. They were missing their true and deep connection with God. And so what was intended to help people love God and love each other had instead become a kind of weak link and thus really an instrument for division rather than connection. And that is a misuse of faith. To be authentically the people whom God has made us to be, we need all of these connections. God in Jesus Christ gave himself to us that we may be connected by the unbreakable bond of God's love for us, God's perfect love for us. So will you abide with God in prayer and worship? This perfect love of God connects us not only to God, but to each other. So will you break bread together and learn together and serve together to build and maintain those connections? And God connects us to the world to bring flavor and light, to bring out the best of it. Will you be a part of bringing out the best of God's creation and lighting it up for all to see so that they also may see and love and follow? For 175 years, God has worked through all y'all here at St. David's to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. God's love is here among you and calls you out into the city to love your neighbors. So whatever may lie ahead for this community of faith, there is only one thing that you ever really need do. Come to love your God and stay to love your neighbor. Amen.